Kuwait City, where the Arab Thought Foundation, the region's leading forum on Arab cultural and economic issues, held its eighth annual FICA conference. Prince Bandar Khalid Al Faisal is a trustee of the Arab Thought Foundation and chairman of the FICA Executive Committee. We hope to stir up uh, discussions um, and uh, introduce ideas uh, and, and really try to bring together uh, leaders of industry and economic leaders within the Arab world as well as decision makers, uh, policy makers within the Arab world and, and try to get them to talk uh, in, a, in an environment that out of it we can perhaps come out with some recommendations and some policies. The foundation places particular importance in listening to and acting on input from the region's young. Its youth program is a pan-regional grouping, equally divided between men and women, all of whom have either been invited to attend after submitting essays and CVs, or who have come to the foundation's attention after displaying excellence in their chosen fields. For example, in Bahrain, we, uh, uh, we started the, uh, the youth program. And it's been now a phenomenal success. Uh, we've done so many uh, things with youth. In fact, this year, youth, uh, we used to have Youth Day. Now youth are uh, integrated into the conference. Each year, the foundation holds a youth cafe to brainstorm the issues its youth program want the Flickr conference to focus on. Last year, the ATF founder, Prince Khalid Al Faisal, and Prince Bandar were in Beirut for the cafe, as was Sama Samir Mezgani. Now 21, she's already been recognized twice by the Guinness Book of Records as the world's youngest and most prolific writer. We had 60 or over 60 young persons attending and we had all the Arab countries uh, represented. And also we had um, the prince with us. So uh, seeing him in Beirut 2009 uh, was quite inspiring because people are interested to know more about what we're saying and what we're doing. There's no question, according to Sama, what the program believes is the most urgent problem facing the region's youth. It's definitely unemployment. I mean, I think all young people are, are concerned about it. And I would say it's the biggest challenge in the Arab region. And it's something that we all have in common. The Arab Labour Organization puts regional youth unemployment at 26%. It varies from country to country, but with the world's fastest growing population, the numbers seem set to only get worse. And it's a situation, according to Sherif Azar, who works for the Egyptian Organization for Human Rights, that has already seen some young people take drastic measures. So we can see like very dramatic cases when young people trying to escape the country through illegal routes and the, sometimes through by crossing the, the land border, sometimes crossing the sea, the Mediterranean. So, and, and sometimes they don't make it and they die en route. So you can tell how devastating the, the, the reality is. One thing that will certainly help, participants argued at the conference during a special session devoted to youth issues, is an improvement in the region's education system. Yusra Bahraini was invited to attend after submitting a paper on education. I suggested uh, things that uh, having uh, more practical training in the schools and universities. Sultan al Qasimi, chairman of the UAE Office of Young Arab Leaders, is also a great believer in vocational education. Uh, much of it should be vocational. Much of it, you do not, uh, you, you have some Arab countries where uh, a lot of the people who, who are working in, uh, in uh, uh, jobs such as plumbing or uh, driving cabs, uh, they have, they have uh, possibly unnecessary uh, qualifications. And Prince Bandar, one of the region's new generation of business leaders, agrees. Having a workforce that is uh, relevant uh, to your needs in terms of human capital is crucial and education is, is the key to all of this. One thing that makes this generation different is the arrival of social networking. The internet has had a profound impact on the ability of the region's young to communicate, allowing them a voice that can now carry across borders. The youth program's Facebook webpage has become a forum for the ongoing discussion and exchange of ideas. Like It's a priority for uh, after each meeting uh, we have uh, with the youth that we add, we are make sure that we are all on the Facebook. And when we meet again, it's as if that it was a continuous dialogue that has been going on, starting from the last meeting. While there's no question that the young face many problems, Sama has a message for those who have given up on the possibility of positive change. 
maybe you failed doing it a um, few, few uh, tens of years ago, but uh, now it's a different concept because if we stop trying, of course we're going to fail, but if we don't stop trying, maybe we will succeed, you never know. This year the Foundation intends to step up its work with the youth program with the appointment of young ambassadors to its board. It believes in the power of the young to shape their future, and in a region more frequently given to pessimism, such an attitude is a refreshing change.